Hey folks, TechNivers here. Today we are taking a look at Matter Control. I had a request from one of my viewers, a friend of mine named Jerry, uh, who is also on our Discord quite a bit, to look into my profile for the Ender 3 Pro on Matter Control. It's been a while since I stepped back to Matter Control, and since I used it last, there was an update. So I've updated it, and it seems like there are a few minor changes, but nothing major that we really need to go over. What we're going to do is, let me get my window all the way into view here that's better all right so today we're going to be going over the settings for this guy on the ender 3 and we'll print a test model make sure it comes out right before we uh, send our settings on to jerry And here we are, Matter Control 2.0. I have already loaded a model. This is a model that I sculpted in Blender. Uh, it's not too bad, looks all right. We need to go into our settings here. Uh, so there are a couple of settings up in here, uh, but most of your navigation is done through this bar over on the right. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. Need to generate some supports real quick because there's some unsupported parts. Okay, so I got those in, that's good. Okay, so here's the thing. Most of the settings are gonna be right here on the side. So we're gonna go over to slice settings and we're gonna set them to pretty much what is standard for the Ender 3. So let's just go through all of these real quick. Um, I'm actually printing PETG, so I'm gonna change this. Uh, my, my temperature settings are gonna be a little bit different than yours, Jer, if you're doing uh, PLA but don't worry about it, just adjust those according to your uh, filament that you're using. And everything else should be pretty close other than the fan. We'll go over that in a second. So layer thickness, I mean, you want this to be accurate to the end of three, so somewhere between 0.1 and 0 0.3. Uh, 0 0.2 is good, of course, the finer, the better. So let's take this down to 0.16. We're gonna leave our initial layer height at 0.2 and we are using three perimeters. Now these are your shells, okay? Um, and then the, this is your top layer thickness and your bottom layer thickness. So 0 0.8, um, almost one millimeter, that's not bad. 20% density, that's normal. I am gonna change from triangles to grid because I feel like it goes a little bit faster. And we'll go into our next setting, the layers and surfaces. Um, I'm not gonna mess with any of these. You wanna make sure that expand thin walls is on. Other than that, don't worry about the rest of that. And as we're looking at infill, um, this is basically the generic setup. This is the way it comes, and we're going to leave that as well. Let's move on to speed. This is one of the more important parts for the Ender 3, and we're looking at 20% of the initial layer speed. No, no, excuse me, 20 milliseconds, millimeters per second for the initial layer speed. We're actually going to change that to 30. Uh, infill speed is at 60. We're going to change that to 55. And top solid infill, we're going to take down to 45. And that is because you want a little bit finer surface there. So, um, raft speed is at 100%. Inside perimeters, outside perimeters. Uh, take a little bit more speed here. So, I'm going to go to 35. If you get any wobbling or vibration lines in there, this is the one you're going to want to turn down, the outside perimeter maybe go back to 30 but this should be sufficient so um support material i'm gonna print that a little bit slower too because they're kind of tiny and i don't want to knock them over but i don't want to go down too much so let's go to 55. um interface layers pretty important but we can print that pretty fast because it doesn't need to be accurate it just needs to be there for it to adhere to so then we will go on to cooling Um, so slow down if layer print time is below 30 seconds. Minimum print speed 10 millimeters per second. That's good. Adhesion. Now this is highly preferential. It depends on what you want. Uh, I will tell you that uh, from your first layers going down, if you can get the first layer to go down accurately, a raft will always give you a better print or slightly more accurate print. But it does consume a lot more plastic. I am very partial to rafts. Uh, with something this small, it's not really necessary. And I'm not so sure that I even need a brim. This is a setting that I change per model. So if I'm doing something that's large and square and flat, I will of course put a brim or a raft on it to keep those corners from peeling out. But since this is a round object, I don't really have that lift problem. 
even with the PETG I'm using on my PEI sheet here. So we're going to leave the raft off. We're going to leave the brim off. Um, if you want to check any of those settings, go ahead. They won't really affect your model quality. Um, just whether or not you can get good adhesion. And I know uh, that one of your problems specifically is the adhesion problem that you're having. Um, so two things. Um, at the start of a slice, one of the reasons that I like Kira is because of the start G code. There's a nice purge line there. And we can put one in here. Um, so it will get that filament flowing. So it's, it's flowing before it starts printing the model. Um, but that is also kind of the purpose of a skirt. So if you're not printing a skirt or a brim, you need to at least do one or the other. Uh, that should help you a lot with figuring out what you need to do to get it to adhere. Um, let's check out support. We are good on support. I'm going to go ahead and leave all of this. You can change the support type if you like, but it's not necessary. And the last thing we need to do here is check out our filament settings. Now, I'm going to be changing this. See, my extruder temperature is already up pretty high. I want it to be 230, and my bed temperature is 75. Um, I want to take that down actually to 50. So the reason I'm dropping my bed temperature so much is because I do have a magnetic mat and it is PEI. So everything sticks to it really, really well. Um, but if I turn it up to 70, it can start to slide around. Uh, it won't come off or lose all of its magnetism, but it does become kind of weaker and that, that produces problems for me. However, since everything sticks to the PEI, running at 50 degrees is perfect for me. It'll warm it up just enough to get that PEI kind of tacky and you will be good to go. So um, if you're using a glass bed, which is not recommended for PETG, but if that's what you're running your PLA on, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have this set a little bit higher. If you're using the magnetic mat, which I believe is what you said you were using, that comes with the uh, Ender 3 Pro, uh, I, I really don't turn the temperature up on that guy either. I think you'll be fine at 50. You don't wanna lose that magnetism and it does stick pretty well. So um, I'm gonna turn my fan off because I am printing PETG, so we don't need that. Um, and then there's a couple other settings. Uh, the main one is retraction. Now you want this to be between three and six. Five works pretty well for me. Um, but that's one of those things that you're gonna wanna make slight adjustments to as you're printing to ensure that you're not getting any blobbing or anything like that from the retraction or, or stringing depending on the model. So um, basically the only settings you're really gonna need to adjust in here is that outer perimeter speed and the retraction settings. Those two settings alone will increase your print quality quite a bit. Mmm, coffee is good. Okay, so now I have this guy pretty much ready to go. And I think we're going to go ahead and throw it on the printer. So what we need to do is export the G-code. Hey, there's vase mode, cool. Um, so export, and we need to actually get my card from the Ender 3 into the computer here. So we got something to put it on. Grab that guy right now. And we will throw this guy on the printer and see how our profile comes out. We might end up making a couple of tweaks because as I said, I haven't used matter control since the uh, last version. So might need to make a couple adjustments, but this should be a good starting point. And I think we're heading in the right direction. So let's get to printing. All right, so once again, we are back and we have our model here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove some of these support features. Um, matter control support pillars are pretty thin and small and easy to remove relatively. And we're just going to go ahead and get it all cleaned up here. Now it's a little bit hard to see, um, but I think so far you should be pretty happy with these settings because it looks nice. So here we go, let's get these guys cleaned up here. Uh, 
probably should have added a little bit more support under the chin. You can see a little bit of blobbing there. Um, and it also, oh no, that is support. That's coming up. I thought maybe the eyebrow needed it as well, but it's looking pretty good. Um, there are a couple of spots that I'm noticing that are going to need a little bit more cleanup, and those are all contact points of the support. So um, for the most part, the model where it was unsupported is pretty well flawless. Now this being PETG, it is semi-transparent. So I can see a little bit of the infill showing through. Um, but other than that, it is still a very, very nice model. And I could always just add another shell layer to reduce that infill show on the outside skin. Yeah, this, this part's bothering me. Um, there we go. Um, so easy enough to clean up that little blob there. Um, but I think this came out very well, and I know it's hard to see. Um, but go ahead and give these settings a try. Let me know how it comes out. Uh, if you're still having adhesion issues, we should probably see if we can figure out something to do about your bed. Because I know, as you've said, you've done painter's tape um, and a lot of other options, and nothing seems to be working for you. But uh, as long as your bed is leveled properly, this slicer works really, really well. So I think these settings should work for you. Let me know if you tried this out, how it works out for you. And if you change any of the settings, let me know what you change. Let me know what you dial in and how it improves your prints. Um, that's going to be it for this video. Jerry, I hope this was super helpful for you. For anybody else who stumbles across this and is curious about matter control with the Ender 3, um, matter control is and always has been one of my favorite slicers. It is a super clean interface and a very powerful tool. And I think that uh, it can get some very, very high quality prints but it just takes a little bit of dialing in. Some of the settings aren't in the places that you would expect to find them when looking through a slicer like Kiro or something like that. So um, that's gonna be it guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Leave a like on this video if you like this video. We can always do more on matter control. I have a couple other printers that we could probably adjust the settings for if you're interested in seeing the TiVo Tarantula Pro or maybe an Anet A8 or ET4 coming up on there. So um, Jerry, my good friend, he is a member of our Discord channel. There is a link to the Discord in the description down below. Please pop over there and check it out. Some really good people over there. And they are pretty much always on and active checking out the latest and greatest in 3D printing. They help keep me up to date on things and toss ideas my way. And it's just a really good place to get together and kind of hang out and chat. So definitely check that out. Uh, we have a couple of different channels in there. You can get on and show off your prints. Uh, there's some Pokemon battles going on and lots of other cool stuff worth checking out. So pop on over and we will see you at the Discord. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. And that's going to be it, guys. Thanks for stopping by. If you'd like to become a Technivore, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And YouTube's suggesting a video for you right here. And there's a playlist right here that's just 3D printing stuff. Also, if you'd like to see your name up top with the rest of my Patreon supporters, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. There, you too can contribute to the channel and make the Technivorous channel even better.